Uh, hello everyone, it's a really small talk about my personal experience to build a REST project, uh, package a REST project with Nix. I learned uh, Nix not so long ago. I, I basically, from, from the side of NixOS, I was really impressed by having like this, my computer is one configuration file and I can have rollback and all this thing and so much cool tooling. And when I learned Nix, I don't really learn Nix first. And I take time before understanding really the Nix language, the Nix package construct. And I could only advise anyone that's new to Nix to take time to understand that rather than just finding a way to write overlay, to find the right Nix OS option in the, in the search. And really, Nix pills is a best resource I personally find. I just want to, to say thanks to that. And also, uh, Nix, Nix Pills helps to write, uh, basically, a Noto tools derivation, explain how to rewrite the STDM, make derivation thing. And so I, I start to wondering how to package, package stuff myself. So information on this talk uh, come from NixOS Wiki mostly. So. This is not the most up-to-date thing, but I, I think we should all contribute to make it better. And so when I start uh, to wonder how to package a REST project, I find out there is a bunch of different solutions and was like, why there is no one canonical solution for that? Why, why so much? So I, I just really explain what is a REST project. It's a bunch of REST files with uh, a configuration file that explain what are the dependencies and log files that give precise hash and version of array dependencies. So, so the question I, I ask myself about what's the difference between all these solutions are questions that arise every time you want to package a, a language project from a language or framework. And basically, these kind of questions that arise are uh, the number of, der of derivations that are produced by your, uh, the next solution you, you choose. And basically, the, the less simple, the more simple solution, simple solution is to just build one big derivation from a project, which is actually simple to uh, maintain because it's less Nix code. And it also should be more faster because, you know, it's, it's less Nix plumbery or overhead. So, so it should be, be better. And, the thing is, when you produce less derivation, you don't use the full power, caching power of Nixtor, which is to our, for example, incremental builds. Like if I just update uh, one line in my source code, I don't want to rebuild all my full project. And I should want to uh, share dependency between different projects, which is actually maybe not so much as things uh, before content addressed derivation, but anyway. And here, when I speak about dependencies, I speak about the language package dependencies, like uh, uh, what is defined into cargo to ML, or if we are in Node, like what is defined in package.json. I do not speak about what I would call system dependencies, which is basically your build inputs, what's the system package on which you depend, like OpenSSL, curl, or this kind of stuff. And so the other question we, we find when we read README about thing to help to package your project with Nix is about EFD, which is a word I discovered in the Nix jargon, which is basically a really handy feature of metaprogramming, which is if a derivation produces Nix code, I can import the Nix, this Nix code, which is really useful because it helps you to don't write using Nix a lot of things which will be painful to be written in Nix itself. Uh, for example, often package manager use custom format to define declared dependencies and writing a parser in Nix could be hard and often like the only real specification of something is its own implementation. So in this case, it's hard to do an alternative implementation in Nix. So, uh, so the thing is, all this solution uh, shares the fact that promotes that don't use EFD. So, and what I show here is only 
things that still are maintained somehow. And the thing is, Nick Speckwage will not accept any peer of some things that rely too much on EFD because there is a flow which is, it's, it's quite of a performance bottleneck in your, the evaluation of your Nick's expression if you rely on it, which is maybe a problem that will be finally itself in Nick itself. So uh, the last thing I look at was what was the default coming from basically the flake or less flake approach. Uh, if I look in Nix package and find there is something defined which is Rust platform, we give me a build Rust package things, which is where are all the language framework, um, the link I give it, it's a bit hidden in the, in the manual as well as there is also per language instruction. And if I try to do this with Flake, I, I, I was thinking the most canonical uh, source of trust was the NixOS slash templates repository, which is NERSC by default. So it looks like, like a standard solution. Uh, I tried to compare this solution and basically this package produced one big derivation and offer you to, to use uh, Ash to trust the reproducibility of the output of it, or, or to rely on cargo lock in which we put trust to be a good source of determinism. And if we compare it with NERSC, NERSC does not produce one but two derivation, which is really handy because it produces one for your source code and one for your dependency set, which is useful because we should. Uh, update more often our source code than the set and dependency on which it rely on. So if you were only the source code, you would just rebuild this, your source and not the set of your dependencies. And if you touch to, if you change the set of your dependencies, it will rebuild everything. And the last thing is cargo to Nix. And cargo to Nix uses a trick to not rely on EFD, which is uh, to rather generate Nix expression not as a process of the build phase, but as a pre-build step, like I have a pre-build step to run, to generate Nix code, and this Nix code, I will import it in my Nix framework, and that will produce one derivation per crate, which is a lot of derivation, and I don't know if it's overkill, but that's one alternative. And to conclude, uh, the thing in which I put a lot of trust and up is Dream to Nix because it tried to offer what will be the best default, default solution for, for large amounts of language and put them behind some consistent API, which is that's the way I define a package, whatever the language. And Dream to Nix offer either to, to wrap Nix package, the Nix package solution, which is REST platform, I should write that, or Crane. And Crane is like really close to NERSC, but for, for better API as I understand it. I didn't take the time to reread the, the blog post before this talk, so I invite you to read it. Uh, also, I want to, to highlight Riff, which is not about rebuilding a package, but which is about uh, deriving a developer shell and guessing what's the right build inputs of your project from your, your language-specific uh, dependency declaration, which is really handy and which is what most of users actually, I guess, want when it's not about publishing and things on this package, but rather having a reproducible, reproducible developer environment. So, so that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ivan. Are there any questions? No questions? Yes, questions? Okay, one more round of applause then, please.